Hi, this is Sesh Venegopal. Welcome to part 2 of the lesson on analyzing binary search using comparison trees. In the first part, you saw how to use a binary search comparison tree to determine the number of comparisons for successful and failed searches on arrays of specific lengths. In this part, you will learn how to find the average number of comparisons for a specific arrays. Let's start with a quick review of part 1. Here's a comparison tree for binary search on an array of length 5, including the failure nodes. The number of comparisons required to find a match at any place in the array is written next to each of the success nodes. Next to the failure nodes are the number of comparisons incurred in failing at the corresponding failure spots in the array. Recall that the failure spots are before the first array location, after the last array location, and all the places between any pair of array locations. You may also remember that the number of comparisons for failure is always one more than that for the immediately preceding success node in the path from the root. The worst case number of comparisons for failure in this example is 6 for all the failure nodes at the bottom most level in the tree. The worst case number of comparisons for success is 5 for matches at the indices 1 and 4. Here's another example, the comparison tree for an array of length 7. The number of comparisons are marked next to the nodes as before. This time, all failure nodes, 8 in number, are at the same level. Observe again that the number of failure nodes is one more than the length of the array. OK, we're all set to compute the average number of comparisons. Let's just look at successes first. Here's a comparison tree again for an array of length 5. How do you compute the average number of comparisons for success? You first locate all the places where a match could occur, which is basically all the positions in the array. In the tree, these are all the success nodes. Then you get the comparisons for these positions and add them up. Here, it's 1 plus 3 plus 3 plus 5 plus 5, which is 17. And finally, you divide this by the number of success positions, which is 5 in this case. So you get 17 over 5 for the average, which works out to 3.4. Let's repeat this for the array of length 7. The sum of comparisons over all success positions is 1 plus 2 times 3 plus 4 times 5, which is 27. The average then is 27 divided by the 7 success positions, which works out to 3.86. Now let's turn our attention to failures, again using the array of length 5 as an example. This is a little tricky because each failure box stands for more than one failure value. In other words, a failure box does not correspond to any single position in the array, but rather, it's like a bin that catches all failures that land at the same place. There are six failure places here, but the spread of values over them may not be the same. If you think of integer values in the array, then in particular the extreme failure boxes, the leftmost and rightmost, catch an infinite set of failures. The average number of comparisons for failure would then be skewed towards these failures. One of them requires four comparisons, and the other requires six, so the average would be five. Even if the domain of values being searched for is finite, the average would still be something between four and six. Can you see why? In case you're not convinced, let's see it by filling in values in the array and restricting the domain of searches to a finite set. The array now has values 11, 12, 17, 19, and 26, and the domain of searches is restricted to values between 10 and 30 inclusive. Under each failure node is listed all the values that it will catch. The leftmost node catches values less than 11, which is just 10. The failure node for values between the index 0 and index 1 of the array will catch nothing because there is no integer between 11 and 12, and so on. 
we can now compute the average number of comparisons for failure as follows. First, multiply the number of failure values at each node with the number of comparisons to get to that node. Going through the failure nodes at the second to last level, we have one value 10 with four comparisons and another 18 also with four comparisons. Then at the last level, where all failure nodes incur six comparisons, going left to right, we have no values at all at the leftmost node, then four, six, and four values respectively at the other nodes. After getting the product of comparisons with the number of failing values, divide by 16 the total number of failure values. You can get 16 by subtracting the number of values in the array, 5, from the domain extent, which is 21. The average is therefore 5.75 comparisons. Now, we knew the number would be between 4 and 6, since every failure node either incurs 4 comparisons or 6 comparisons, and the average must be in that range. Let's repeat this exercise for the array of length 7 with some values thrown in. Say the search domain is all values in the set 10 to 50. All failure nodes are at the last level and all of them incur six comparisons. The number of failure values are listed against each failure node. Verify that these match with your count of the failure values. We can do the computation like in the previous example, but wait! Every failure node incurs the same six comparisons. So the average must be 6, of course. In fact, we never need to do the average com computation for failures for any comparison tree. Either all failure nodes are the last level, or some in the last and others in the second to last. If the former, the average is exactly the same as the number of comparisons for any one failure, say f. If the latter, it is somewhere between f and f minus 2, where f is the number of comparisons for any failure at the last level, and f minus 2 is the number of comparisons for any failure at the second to last level. Since the difference is only 2, for all practical purposes, we can take the average to be either f or f minus 2, or more generally f minus 1, the midpoint between them. There's one assumption we have been making all along, and that is all searches are equally likely. Let's take up the example of the length 5 array again. There are five success spots, and if you assume that each of them is equally likely, then each spot carries a 1 in 5 chance of occurrence. Let's throw in some values to see what this means. If you were to make, say, 100 searches for the values in the array, 20 of them would be for 11, 20 for 17, 20 for 12, 20 for 19, and 20 for 26. Sort of like five users on a website logging in an equal number of times one day. In other words, each value has a chance of 1 in 5 of being searched for. Earlier, we compute the average number of comparisons for successful search to be 17 divided by 5. We can rewrite the average computation to factor in these search probabilities by first breaking up the numerator into separate terms for the number of comparisons for success nodes, and then rewriting the denominator 5 as the multiplier 1 over 5 for each term. So we can rethink the average as a sum of products. Specifically, it is the sum of the product of the number of comparisons for success at each node, or spot in the array, with the probability of landing at that node. Now, instead of equal probabilities or likelihoods, imagine an unequal distribution. This is akin to different users logging in a different number of times on a website. For instance, say 11 is searched for 10% of the times, which means a 0.1 probability. Probabilities for the other values in the array are assigned as well, as shown under the array values, and they all add up to 1. The average number of comparisons can be recomputed 
by using the sum of products with these probabilities as the multipliers instead of 1 over 5. Let's write the probabilities against the success nodes in the tree as well, which will make it easier to do the sum of products. So the average number of comparisons for success with these unequal probabilities is 3.5, 3.6. You can do a similar thing with failure nodes, but we saw earlier that there is either no spread or a spread of 2 in the number of comparisons over all failures. The unequal probabilities will do nothing to change the spread, and so there is really nothing to be gained by going through the motions. At this point, I'm pretty sure you have a good understanding of how to draw a binary search comparison tree for an array of some specific length, how to count the worst case number of comparisons for success and failure, and how to compute the average number of comparisons for success and failure. And we just now saw how to even compute the average for successes with an arbitrary set of probabilities. Okay, you're now ready to take the big step which is to derive a formula for the worst case number of comparisons for success and failure for an array of any arbitrary length n. So that given a value for n, we can plug it into the formula and come up with an exact number for the worst case. We'll see how to do this in the next part. See you in part three.